Hello, in this presentation we will enter reversing entries for accrued interest into QuickBooks Pro 2018. If you've been continuing along with us, we will be continuing with the Get Great Guitars problem. If not, that's okay. We're going to be talking about reversing entries and how to enter a reversing entry for accrued interest. A bit about what a reversing entry is, why they might be used within an accounting system as well. If you have the backup file up to this time, you can restore that by going to File and Restore. We're going to have the Open Windows open by going to the View tab and Open Window List. Within the Open Windows, we have the Home Page open. To open the Home Page, go to Company and Home Page. We're going to close the balance sheet right now and just take a look at the Home Page and start from here. We're going to be talking about the adjusting entry process and a reversing entry for the adjusting entry process. Adjusting entries are going to be done at the end of the time period. They're trying to put everything on an accrual basis as of the point in time that we're really looking at the financial statements and or distributing the financial statements. Last time we did an adjusting entry for accrued interest. Now we're going to do a reversing entry. Some of the adjusting entries will require or could use a reversing entry as one system that can be used in order to make things more efficient between the data input that normally happens throughout the process and uh, the adjusting process at the end of the, the period. So in order to see this, we will go to reports up top. We're going to go to company and financial and scroll down to the balance sheet standard. We're going to change the dates to the date range we are working on by going to customize reports up top. Dates from 01, 01, 21 to 12. Well, let's make it 02-28-21. So January 1st, 2021 to February 28th, 2021. Okay. We see our balance sheet here. Scrolling down, we're looking at this $25 interest. That was done with an adjusting journal entry. And we made that at the end of the time period saying that we owe interest on a loan that is outstanding right now of this $25 and we have a uh, expense that we should be recording in this time period that we are covering related to that even though we have not yet paid it. What we want to do now is reverse this journal entry so that um, when we pay the interest on the loan we do not have to worry about this reversing process. In other words when we pay the loan payments typically we want the the accounting department to just be able to write the check in accordance with whatever system we have, whether that be uh, recording it in accordance with the accrual, um, the amortization table that came with the loan, or uh, writing a check to the loan itself and having us just adjust it. What we don't want them to have to do is figure out how much of the, of the accrual needs to be reversed at the point in time we write the check. One reason for that is that oftentimes the accounting department, the day-to-day -day journal entries is different from the adjusting process, which may be done by another department or by an outside CPA firm. And therefore, we, we want to reverse that and not mess up the normal accounting process. That's what reversing entries do. They're not perfect, but they uh, help us to make that separation and have the two departments do their thing without having the overlap messing each other up. So what we're going to do is we're going to reverse this and reversing entries always happen on the first day of the next time period. So we are we got our financial statements correct. If anybody wants them, if we want to read them as of 228, the end of this month, then they are correct. That $25 is correct right there. We're going to reverse it as of the first day of March and um, that will we'll reverse it out so that uh, we won't have to worry about that entry when we make the normal payment. So let's see what that looks like. First, let's take a look at this 25 and double click on that. Double click on this item. We entered this adjusting entry through the register. And we're going to do the same thing here through the register in terms of the reversing process. So this is one way we could get to the register. If I close this out and close this out. The other way we can get to the register is go to the banking drop down and then go to use register. We're going to select the drop down and we're looking for that interest payable again. So we're going to go to the current liabilities. We have the interest payable right here and we will select that item and we'll see there's the 25 right there. 
All we're going to do is reverse that. We're going to make an, the next day of the next month. So it's going to be 030121. And instead of an increase, we are going to decrease by that 25. And then we're going to say that the other side of it is going to be interest expense. Interest expense. Now, this is going to look funny when we record this. And we'll explain why and why we would want to do this. But uh, we're going to reduce this amount back down to zero and put the other side to interest expense. We're going to say record. And then let's go back to the balance sheet and see if it does what we hope it to do. What do we hope it to do? As of March, we expect this to go away. So we're in Feb uh, February 28th. If I change this date to one day next and refresh, then there's no longer that, that accrual there. It's gone now. If I go to, if I want to see what happened, uh, we can go back to the register, of course, and see that it went to zero, and that's why it's no longer there. So if we go back to the balance sheet, that's what we have there. If we go to the profit and loss, then reports, scrolling down to company and financial, scrolling to the first report, profit and loss standard, changing the date range from 0101 to 12. Uh, let's make it to 02 2821, January 1st, 2021 to February 28th, 2021. We then see that $25 right there in interest expense. That's what we want there because it needs to be included in an expense in order to really make our net income proper at the end of the day. If we make this the first day of the next month, however, if we say we want to now go to 01. Sorry, 030121 to 03-31-21, the next month. Then we have this negative interest there. And that should look kind of funny. We shouldn't have a negative interest expense. That's kind of weird. And the reason we have a negative interest expense is because of that reversing entry that we just entered. This is actually incorrect right now. And it will not be correct until we make the interest payment in this time period or make the adjusting entry at the end of the time period. So this isn't a perfect system is the point. These reversing entries is a system that works in that it makes things correct as of the cutoff date, as of the date we make the financial statements, as of the end of the month. And then it's not perfect in the prior time period because it results in this case to a, a negative expense, which looks really funny, shouldn't happen. Uh, but it will be correct once the normal interest payment is made then the, this negative piece and the positive piece that will be recorded when we make the normal interest payment will net out to the proper amount that should be recorded in this month. So at that point in time, we'll be okay again. And then at the end of the month, once we do our adjusting process, we'll be okay again. So the point here is that this makes us correct kind of on a periodic basis as of the end of the month once we do the adjusting entries which we really have to do anyways to be really accurate. And uh, it's not a perfect system uh, in the interim periods, but as long as we recognize that, then it can be a system that, uh, that works for us going forward and it kind of separates the, the duties between the outside CPA firm doing adjusting process or uh, a separate department doing the adjusting process and the people that are actually entering the data, the day-to-day -day data, not having to deal with uh, reversing those adjusting processes.